More now on that growing anger over the sentencing of Porsche driver Richard Pusey, who could walk free within days over the Eastern Freeway tragedy that claimed the lives of four Melbourne police officers. One of those officers was Constable Josh Presney, and his brother Alex Presney joins us now live. Thank you for your time today. We really appreciate it. You've been incredibly strong, and, and thank you for talking to us. When you heard uh, the sentence yesterday, how did you respond? How did the family respond? Oh, we responded pretty much as per, per usual as with, with everything. It's just um, we know that it's, it's justice, this sort of thing has to be done, but um, it's not at the forefront of our minds. The forefront of our minds is just basically on how we learn to live without, uh, without our mate, without Josh. But um, mm. we're thankful for everyone's support and what everyone's done for us so far. But this is just one thing that has to be done. It's the society that we live in and we're appreciative of everyone who's been able to make it possible in the job and, and the community greater. This is a hard one to ask this. Um, uh, this guy could walk free mm. next week. I, I think the country uh, feels um, some element of your pain here and there is a huge amount of outrage towards this sentence. How, how do you and the family feel about him possibly walking free next week? Pretty realistic about it. Um, he's had his time served. He's done what he's done. And um, just like anybody who's been in that, in that situation and being realistic about it, being in the police force myself, I know that that's what has to be done. Um, having someone like that walking around in our community, though, it's, uh, it's not ideal, as we all know. So I'm on board with what everyone else has sort of said. We're well, not really being keen on that. But um, Life will have its way, as it does for everyone in this sort of situation. It has its way. But um, he, uh, he and everyone else who have done this sort of thing can live with that. But um, as long as we live our lives happily and in, in harmony, we'll stay out of harm's way. But we've just got to make sure we rally around each other, that sort of thing. As I said, it's not really on the, on the forefront of my mind. If when, Once I got told about it yesterday, I almost, I, I completely forgot 30 seconds later and got back to playing my guitar. <laughs> Good on you. Um, we'll get onto that in just a second. How do you feel about this guy, though, Pusey? I don't have any feelings for him. That's Good. that's as simple as that. He's not worth the time. It's like it's like being a, having a bully around in school. If you don't look at him or don't give him any air time, then he won't hurt you or do anything or affect you in, in any way. Good man. The judge um, described Pusey's uh, actions as heartless, cruel, disgraceful. Um, but effectively, when you look at this sentence, um, he only got two months um, for that part of his crimes. Um, do you think? Um, I don't know. It's very difficult. You being in the law. Um, do you think that law should be changed, should be tougher? It's hard to say because it's the first time that's been used in Victoria and Australia. It's hard to set a, have a precedent set previously. I mean, there were over, overseas in the UK that we've heard about, about how to go about what sort of sentence should be put in place for this. But, and, f and that's unfortunate in this sort of case. But now, hopefully, for the future and for other victims and other um, offenders as well, this, this can have set a precedent and, have, and be an example set for um, when this may be used again and the fact that it actually can be used again as well. So people, members of the community, can't feel like they can sort of get away with doing this sort of thing, that, but knowing that there is a sentence and a charge for that sort of behaviour, it is comforting in a way, but mm. um, obviously being brand new in, this, in, in our community and what we've um, seen so far, it's, it's hard to say, but... It, like I said, and I hate, I hate using this cliche, but it is what it is, and we all have to live with that, and that's, um, yeah, that's fine with me. Uh, look, I, um, uh, if, if something had happened to my brother, I mean, I, I felt so outraged yesterday um, when this sentence came down, and, and he's not even my brother. Um, and I know that you, you don't want to dwell on that, but what do you tell all of us out there, um, the, the rest of the country, who, who feel so genuinely angered um, about um, this guy only receiving a, such a short sentence, what would you say to us? Don't dwell on it too much, I'd say. Um, what I'm dwelling on is losing my brother um, and making sure that that's the, that's the focal point about how to, how to learn to walk with this and how to live without him. It's, that's, that's, that should be the focal point. And I would say that because I don't know of people who are in, my, in a similar situation to me, but I would say that if you were, that's what you would be feeling as well. Yeah. And because that's the most important, the most important thing is to rally around your family, wh whoever you've got, your friends, and just to make sure that you're feeling the love, because that's, what, that's what's the most important to me, is to feel the love, talking about it openly, like I've done previously, 
and just to feel that people have got you and that's all that's all that I need and that's what I feel like is the most important for anybody. That, that's such beautiful and powerful words, my man. Um, your brother was a rookie officer and only been in the um, force a, a few months when he was killed. Um, can you tell Australia about him? What sort of a fellow was he? Yeah, absolutely. I love telling people about Josh because he was a he was a professional with everything that he that he he honed into. Basically, he, he was a guitarist, a, a keen triathlete as well, and a keen police officer. But a lot of things came before before the police force, and things like his music was something that I could share in with him as well. Being a being a drummer, um, we shared that from a, an, an early age. Being involved in triathlon with our parents, believe it or not, they're still beating us. Um, but <laughs> Josh was a very, <laughs> he was a very professional person with the way he went about things, especially with the job. He came to the station that I worked at, which was just, I was over the moon about because that was just so, I thought that would be so much fun. Be, there were so many people who thought, oh, you'd be working with your brother, isn't that weird? And I said, no, because he's my mm. brother. I, <laughs> I've lived with him for 25 years. It's not going to be weird at all. But um, he went about his work so professionally. He listened he, f he followed what everyone else had to say and he was very respectful about that. And that's what I was so proud of because that's what I feel like as a rookie as well and someone who's brand new to it, um, it's always great to be just that sponge to, to learn, um, to sort of see how the policing world works. And, but he brought so many traits that we pr pride ourselves on as a family of yeah. treating people of how you like to be treated, making sure that you just speak up whenever you need help and all, all things like that and that people knew only a short time into the job that this like the, the, the quote that was used he had the policing world at his feet and a lot, of, a lot of people didn't see it in him which was fair enough in a way it wasn't something that he honed in on early on in his other yeah. teenage years or adult life he saw what I did and thought that and it's he would never want to admit that he would follow his little brother into the job but um <laughs> He saw what I did and thought, geez, that's a good idea. I reckon I can do that. And, yeah, he absolutely could. Look, I'm, I'm going to embarrass you here a little bit, um, but you, we understand you, you've written a song for him and, and I, <laughs> I'm going to play a little bit of it now um, for the country. Have a listen, folks. Oof. Oof. Okay, you got me. <laughs> oh, mate. Yeah, and life, it, Oof, it is what it is, yeah. as you say. Very powerful. Um, mm. I, I wish you genuinely, you and your family, um, all, all the very best. Your courage in coming on and talking about your bro this morning um, is incredibly inspiring. Very difficult. Thanks, but um, we thank you for it. Good on you, mate. Go well. Thanks very much, Carl. Cheers. Cheers. Wow, what a beautiful man. What a beautiful family, huh? Mm.